Hello, Internet Sister Bert. Okay, first things first. I gave my computer and the cords around the case and around the desk and snaked through the desk as well as the room to my needle ones. I complete clean up and cleaning. There was plenty of dust underneath the heat stick of the fan and I didn't get all of it removed due to not noticing a hole, rather a defect, on the attachment that I used to a 5mm attachment to suck up all the dust. So I'm gonna have to give it another clean later on throughout the week. And uh, <coughs> I put some vinyl hooks in the side of my computer desk in order to hide, but uh, fuck, not a computer, a desk, just to hold all the cords in one spot. So yes, it's all done. There's still a mess of cords, but it's rather highly organized. And I appreciate what I've done a lot. It's better than having to untangle them every time I pull my machine out. My audio cords are no longer held by a fucking clothes peg. Or actually by a rather long piece of wire that's twisted on the ends. That can clip onto anything. Which, thankfully, is doing its job. This lamp, which I have here, just behind me, used to actually be a bare bulb and now it's just covered by a yogurt container. In case you are wondering, yes, an actual yogurt container lid. So I don't fucking go blind looking at it. The glare is just too much and I needed a shade. And it works just fine. As you can see right here, the room is almost pitch black because the poor fucking light up here. A poor excuse for a light. It's real shit. If you're wondering. So, oops, kind of yeah, fix the angle on this again. Yeah, it's a real shit light. And, uh, I needed to make some changes. So, no more blinding light. And this mic, even though the audio is not always crystal clear on it, it's actually very good. And I'm satisfied about that result. And uh, I've added an additional 2 gigabytes of RAM to my machine by swapping out a module. First swap I did was basically dual channel. It didn't work, so I had to swap. Luckily, the other stick of RAM that I purchased on my friend, because I purchased two of them, was basically single channel, and thankfully it worked. So, yeah, my machine is future proof because I don't use Windows all the time, I use open source software. Nothing is literally discontinued in terms of hardware. And uh, no, my machine is 64 bit. I have an older one that's also 64 bit. So it supports the latest, greatest with everything. When it comes time to phase up my graphics card and replace it with something new, it'll still work because I got PCI Express. The older one has the same. Now, the other thing is, uh, I replaced my brother's fax machine with the Canon Faxball 100, or L100. For the time being, I had to use Windows to send faxes to a few places, because, you know, they still require that. They don't have an email to submit it, and I've asked them about it, and they don't have it, so I just do it that route until they get it set up, which is fine. I use the PC fax functionality. I don't want to have to print and then fax it. You know, how frustrating that is, and it wastes paper. So that saves a lot of time. And, uh, at least the PC fax functionality is supported regardless of how old the version of Windows is. It's supported on Windows 5.1 right up to 6.6. .6. That's 10. Or 6.5.5. .5. That's where it's at right now with the last feature update. If you didn't know. And if you weren't fucking keeping track. So, yeah, distance swapping. And the old hardware was definitely uh, dropped off a of value village. Even though this cannot scan documents, I have a flatbed scanner which can. So, that makes it easier. The only downside is it sometimes does not work. And so, that's just 
Canon to begin with, and their software and a little conflict on Linux for the same scanner module. Yeah, it is a bug, and it doesn't always work. But then again, I really don't give two fucks. As long as it scans, sometimes in black and white, sometimes in color, sometimes in red, this is a bug. Again, on Windows it's fine. Just I gotta do it a few times so the lamp actually turns it on. But, you know, it's things you gotta deal with. Rather than that, I'm happy and satisfied 100%. So, yeah. I still gotta reorganize uh, my desk. It's a complete ass head, ass head of a mess. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I had to redo this video in case you're wondering because, now other than that, I forgot to hit record. And I'm sure you've probably done that too, and you weren't too happy. Now, the part that I missed out and screwed up and completely screamed my fucking head off after I real no, I didn't scream my head off, but you know, in frustration you might have. I'm going to basically be putting back to use my CCD camcorder. It's a VHS camera, a GE9810, and with this little handy device, it's gonna work. I just hook it up, plug it in to that USB port that's all set. And I've been doing that for a long time. I had another gra capture card, which is on my older machine, which I'm not using. And that uh, my current setup does not have a slot for that card. It's old. It's PCI. Who uses PCI anymore? Right. I don't have an older quad core machine that's that or dual core that's got a PCI slot and I'm disappointed. So at least I got one way of doing it. And if I do get it set up, I won't be able to put it behind my display because well, maybe I can no actually no I can't because my speakers are behind there. Who puts the speakers behind the machine? They're behind the display? Uh probably nobody. So yeah. Or maybe I could. I have to figure it out. Got a milk cart. Uh, got a milk uh, tray. I don't know, but whatever. At least I can do something, or I'll just set it up beside my computer. So that's probably another easy way to do it. On a tripod, of course, so it doesn't fall over. And uh, yeah, and hope for the best, and hope the software never crashes. It's actually never done that. So thankfully for that. Anyways, that's all I gotta say. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more. Cheers.